we get into the first exercise in this lesson so the first exercise in lesson 4 says fed the fras salon landication doni so frame sentences according to the given indication so they've given an indication they've given two nouns and then they have also given the adjective which should be used for comparison so the first choice of words given here is the film the film le livre and they have given bon so they are asking you to compare a film with a book and using the adjective bon and they have also given the symbol there now this is the most important one to notice they have given the plus symbol there where you have to give the degree of superiority so we start a sentence with a subject this becomes the object and then you introduce the adjective to describe to compare both so the first answer goes like this the film a so subject verb and then you have the clue sign here so the clue bon i already told you clue bon does not exist when it is plus you have to write clue but because the adjective is bon you will write meilleur a meilleur que le livre film is better than book film is better than book so remember there is bon and there is plus clue bon becomes one word meilleur so you write meilleur que so with that we move to the next sentence it says the metro lotobus efficas le metro le metro lotobus efficas and what is the symbol given there they were again given plus so they given plus so here efficas means efficient is more practical so metro metro is metro autobus is bus so we we'll start with the subject le metro a remember you have to write the verb the verb is not given here they only given the subject and the object and then they have given the adjective and then they have given the symbol you have to write the ad, the verb here which is être for third person singular you write est the metro a plus efficace que l'autobus the metro is more efficient than the bus we go to the third one which is le théâtre le cinéma intéressant and they have given here the minus symbol so le théâtre le théâtre le cinéma and then the adjective is intéressant and they have given minus so when it is minus you have to write moi and then this becomes the subject so le théâtre a moi intéressant remember i am not making any changes to the adjective the adjective here is intéressant the subject given here is théâtre which is in the masculine form you can see that it ends with e but it is an exception it is le so there is no change to the adjective the adjective will change only when the gender of the subject changes when the subject becomes feminine this also becomes feminine so there is no change here but i am writing moi because there is minus moi intéressant intéressant que 
le cinéma. So which means the theater is less interesting than the cinema. See these opinions need not be necessarily correct, let's not go into that. But let's just see how to compare the two things based on the given exercise. So we now move on to the fourth one. Which is here they are comparing two people. And both of them are actors. One is a French actor, one is a Hollywood actor. So, they part to you. Dustin Hoffman. And they are saying talent work. Their work today. 
So when I have shark, shark should be followed by a common noun. When I say shaka, the indication of the person is already there in this word shaka. So when I say shaka, the common noun that is indicative is already implied in this shaka. So there is no common noun after shaka where it only says each one. Each one of my students, each one of somebody. But when I say each, each will definitely be followed by a common noun. So let's look into this exercise. The first sentence says, dash étudiant fait ses devoirs, which means, dash student does his homework, his homework or her homework. So here you say each student, you will say each student. I told you each will be followed by a common noun. So I will since étudiant is a common noun here, I will write chaque étudiant. So let me write it here. Chaque plus common noun. Now look at this. Dash, the second sentence, dash des étudiants fait ses devoirs. So here also you have étudiant. This is also a common noun. But this is an article contracte which means of the. It's a contracted article which is made up of the plus le, le which is they. It is not an indefinite article they. This is of the students. So, of the students do his homework or her homework. So, each one of the students. So, here the word is each one. We have, the implication of the students is already there in this word. So, you will write Shakan des étudiants. Remember, they here is of the, each one of the students does his homework or her homework. Next one, dash actor are of the new ampli, which means dash actor got a price. So here you can see that it is straight away a common noun. So you will write shark actor are obtenue and free. Each actor got a price. Again you can see dash got a price. So you can see here there is no common noun. In the earlier sentence you can see a common noun here. So you will use sharp. Here the common noun is not written. So which means each one got a price. Each one got a price, so you will say, Shaka a obtenu un prix. Shaka a obtenu un prix. We come to the last sentence, dash face on travail. Dash face on travail. So again, here you can see there is no common noun, there is only a verb here. So when I said, if you use each, there has to be a common noun. Since there is no common noun, you can straight away understand each one does his work or her work. Each one does his work or her work. So the answer is Shaka face on travail. Shaka face on travail. So with that, we come to the second exercise. Thank you. Hello, everybody. We are now in lesson 4 and we are going to do the third exercise. The third exercise is basically fill in the blanks with the given words given on top. 
So I'm going to read the sentence. First, I'm going to give you the meaning of the words, and then I'm going to give you the meaning of the words and tell you why we are choosing that particular word for that sentence. So the third exercise reads: Rituve la place de participase suivant. So fill in the blanks with the given past participles. So they've given only the past participles there. So they are lieu, remporte, choisi, tourne, interprete, apprécié. I'll read it once again and then tell you the meanings. Lieu, red, remporte, one, choisi, chose, tourne, shot, as in shot, a film which is shot. Interprete, interpreted or performed. Apprécié, appreciated. So the first sentence reads: On our dash, l'intégral de ce film en studio. On our dash, l'intégral de ce film en studio. It means we dash. The entire film in studio. We dash the entire film in studio. So here, the movie was shot in the studio. So the answer is tourne. On a tourne, l'integral de ce film en studio. We go to the next sentence. Ce film a dash le prix Oscar. Ce film a dash le prix Oscar. This film dash the Oscar prize. So here the answer is won the Oscar prize. So the answer is remporte. So the sentence reads: "Ce film a remporté le prix Oscar." Ce film a remporté le prix Oscar. We go to the next sentence. Les acteurs ont Dash le rôle à la perfection. Les acteurs ont dash le rôle à la perfection. The actors dash their role to perfection. The actors dash their role to perfection. So here it is either interpreted or performed. The meaning of interprete is either interpreted or performed. So you can understand it as les acteurs ont interprété le rôle à la perfection. Les acteurs ont interprété le rôle à la perfection, which means the actors perform their role to perfection. We go to the next sentence. On a beaucoup dash le rôle de Tom Cruise. On a beaucoup dash le rôle de Tom Cruise. It means we dash a lot the role of Tom Cruise. We dash a lot the role of Tom Cruise. So here it is appreciated, apprécié. On a beaucoup apprécié le rôle de Tom Cruise. On a beaucoup apprécié. Le rôle de Tom Cruise, which means we appreciated a lot the role of Tom Cruise. We go to the next sentence. Il n'ont pas dash le compte rendu du film. Il n'ont pas dash le compte rendu du film. It means they did not dash the review of the film. They did not dash the review of the film. So they did not read. They did not read the review of the film. So the answer is lieu. Il n'ont pas lieu le compte rendu du film. They did not read the review of the film. The last sentence in this exercise: Le metteur en scène a dash a meilleur personnage. Le metteur en scène a dash a mayor personage which means the director dash a better character the director dash 
a better character. It means the director chose a better character. So the option is choisi. Le metteur en scène a choisi a meilleur personnage. The director chose a better character. With that, we end the third exercise. Thank you. Hello, everybody. So today we are in lesson four, titled Le Cinema. And I'm going to do the fourth exercise, which says, mettez les verbes au passé récent. So which means, put the verbs in the recent past. And what is recent past? An action which just happened. So I've written down the sentences on the board. And I'm going to show you how to change these sentences into passé récent. Now you can see that these sentences in, are in passé composé. So what is passé composé? Simple past tense. And how do you know that it is in simple past tense? You can see that it is a subject. You can see the auxiliary verb. And you can see the past participle. So je suis rentré de France hier soir. So what does it mean? I just, I returned from France yesterday evening. I returned from France yesterday evening is in simple past tense. So if this is present and this is passé composé, we are going to bring it here, which is passé récent. I'm going to change it from simple past to the recent past. And what is the syntax for the recent past? Subject plus venir plus the or the apostrophe plus the infinitive of the verb. So we just looked into the exercise of how we change from passé composé to passé récent. So I'm going to show you the logic here, how to change it. So what is the syntax? I'll go over the syntax once again. You write the subject. Then you write venir. Then you write de or the apostrophe. Plus you write the infinitive of the verb. So je suis rentré de France hier soir becomes je viens de and which is the verb of the sentence? This is the past participle from the verb rentrer. So je viens de rentrer. Then you write the rest of the sentence, the France hier soir. So I'm not writing that all over again. This is for you to understand how I have changed from passé composé to passé raison, which is a recent past, subject plus venir plus d plus the infinitive. The infinitive is the unconjugated verb which has come from the past participle rentrer. So is that clear? So je suis rentré becomes je viens de rentrer de France hier soir. We now move to the next sentence, which is son mari a acheté une voiture neuve. What does that mean? Her husband bought a new car. Her husband bought a new car. So which is the subject of the sentence? This whole thing is a subject. Many students have this habit of writing this as a subject and this as something else. Please understand this whole thing is the subject of the sentence. This becomes the auxiliary verb and this is the past participle. So what is the syntax for passé raison? You write the subject. So I write so mari. And then I conjugate venir for the given subject. This is third person singular. Venir becomes vient. Then I write de or de apostrophe. From the past participle, you can see that it starts with a vowel. So I write de apostrophe. And then I put this as the unconjugated verb. Son mari vient d'acheter. Then you bring this back into the sentence, you and with your nerve. So son mari a acheté is in passé composé. How do I know? Subject plus auxiliary verb plus past participle. And this is subject plus venir plus de or de apostrophe plus the infinitive of the verb. Infinitive is the unconjugated verb. We now move to the third sentence, which is nous avons passé une épreuve ce matin, which means we passed a test this morning. We passed a test this morning. 
So from here, I'm going to make it into passer raison. You write the subject nu. You conjugate venir for nu, which is nu veno. Then you write de or de apostrophe. I put de because this is what I'm going to make it as the infinitive, and this starts with a consonant p. Nu venon the passé, and you bring the rest of the sentence. You na prove samata. Nu venon the passé. You na prove samata. We now move to the next sentence. J'ai vu un film génial cet après-midi, which means I saw an excellent or an awesome film this afternoon. I saw an excellent film this afternoon. So now I'm going to make this into passé raison. You write the subject. Je conjugate venir, and this is the past participle from which you write the infinitive of the verb. But remember, before you write the infinitive. It is important to write de e or de apostrophe. So je viens de voir, and then you bring this whole thing back into the sentence. Je viens de voir un film génial cet après-midi, which means I just saw an interesting film or an excellent film or an awesome film this afternoon. With that, we move to the last sentence of this exercise. Il a lu le compte rendu de ce film dans un journal. Il a lu le compte rendu de ce film dans un journal. It means he read the report of this film in a paper. He read the report of this film in a paper. So now from here we make it into passé raison. Write the subject, conjugate venir. And then you write de because this is the past participle from which we are going to write the original verb. The original verb is lire. So how do I remember all these? You are supposed to by heart it when you learn passé composé itself. For irregular verbs, we need to by heart the past participles. So il vient de lire, and then you bring back the rest of this into the sentence. Please don't stop it. With only this, you will not get marks. You have to write the rest of the sentence back into your answer to make it a complete sentence. So, with that, we finish the fourth exercise, which is changing the verbs into passé raison from passé composé. Thank you. Hello, everybody. So, we are in lesson four, and we are doing the grammar part. We are in the fifth exercise. Mettez les verbes au passé composé, which means. Put the sentences in past tense. So I have written the sentences already on the board, and now we are going to change these sentences into past tense. Here you can see that the sentence is already in passé raison. I remember telling you all that if this is present and this is passé composé, this is passé raison. So. We are going to change sentences from passé raison to passé composé. And what is the syntax for passé composé? You write the subject, then you write the auxiliary verb, then you write the past participle. The auxiliary verb can be either être or avoir in present tense. So what do we need to write? That which is in passé raison. We are changing it into passé composé. We write the subject first, then we write the auxiliary verb, which can be either être or avoir in present tense, plus the past participle. So when do we use être? When it is one of the verbs of Dr. Mrs. Van Pertemp, we will use être. When it is not, we will use avoir. So let us look at this sentence. In this, the verb of the sentence is annoncé. Anose is the verb of the sentence. So first, let us write the subject. The sub subject is Pauline. Pauline, and I told you, you write the subject, you leave a gap, and then write the past participle of the verb given. So anose is a regular er verb. For all er verbs, the past participle is you cut off the er and you write e accent aigu. So you leave a gap. And then you write annonce.
and then we are going to fill the middle part which is the auxiliary verb now ano say is not one of the verbs of dr mrs van patten so you will use avar avar for pauline pauline is third person singular l so you will write pauline a a ano say la nouvelle de son mariage so you will bring this back into the sentence so what does it mean Pauline vient annoncer la nouvelle de son mariage means Pauline just announced the news of her marriage This means Pauline announced and then you will bring this back the news of her marriage So we move on to the next sentence nous venons de commencer notre nouveau projet We just started our new project nous venons de commencer notre nouveau projet so again now we are going to change it from passé raison to passé composé so we write the subject we identify that this is the verb of the sentence we leave a gap we write the past participle commencé now commencé is not one of the verbs of dr mrs van patten you will use avoir nous avons commencé notre nouveau projet notre nouveau projet nous avons commencé notre nouveau projet we now move on to the third statement le film vient de remporter le prix oscar the film just won the oscar prize the film just won the oscar prize so again we will write the subject le film and this is the verb of the sentence leave a gap you write remporté you write the past participle because the syntax is subject auxiliary verb past participle so you write the past participle and now you are going to fill it up with the middle portion which is avoir because remporté is not one of the verbs of dr mrs van patten le film is third person singular il so avoir for il is a le film a remporté le prix oscar so that is the answer for the third statement we move on to the fourth one vous venez de prendre le petit déjeuner vous venez de prendre le petit déjeuner which means you just took breakfast you just took breakfast now this we are going to make it into passé composé subject is vous verb is prendre prendre past participle is pri prendre is an irregular re verb and for irregular verbs you will by heart the past participle it becomes pri and prendre is not one of the verbs of dr mrs van patten so you will write avoir as the auxiliary verb avoir for vu is away vu is away pri le petit déjeuner so bring this back into the sentence vous avez pris le petit déjeuner now we come to the last sentence of this exercise il vient de trouver un emploi dans une société coréenne il vient de trouver un emploi dans une société coréenne which means he just found a job in a korean society he just find, found a job in a korean society so here the subject is il the verb is trouve so you will write il you leave a gap and then you will write the past participle of trouve it is a regular er verb but whether regular er or irregular er the past participle for all er verbs is you cut off the er and you write e accent aigu so trouve Now we come to the middle portion which is the auxiliary verb trouve is not one of the verbs of dr mrs van patten you will write avoir for il which is il a il a trouve then you will write this whole thing back into the sentence il a trouve un emploi dans une société coréenne so with that we finish the fifth exercise thank you hello everybody
so now we are going to do the sixth exercise in lesson four which is again fill in the blanks with the given words on top so the exercise reads complete libremo complete libremo the options given are there are five words given i'll read the words and give you the meanings incroyable incroyable which means unbelievable etono which means strange etono which is surprising third word is droll droll means funny deplorable means miserable or deplorable as in english the last word curious means funny or odd curious which means funny or odd i'll repeat again incroyable which means unbelievable etono surprising droll funny deplorable miserable curious odd or strange so the first sentence reads sir kie dash c'est que le film a remporté plusieurs prix ce qui est dash c'est que le film a remporté plusieurs prix it means that which is dash is that the film won many prizes so that which is dash is that the film won many prizes so ce qui est incroyable that which is unbelievable is that the film won many prizes so the first sentence option is incroyable the second sentence reads ce qui est dash c'est que vous n'êtes jamais allé au cinéma ce qui est dash c'est que vous n'êtes jamais allé au cinéma so that which is dash is that you've never gone for a movie that which is dash is that you've never gone for a movie so here there is a lot of surprise element so you can write the second one ce qui est étonnant c'est que vous n'êtes jamais allé au cinéma ce qui est étonnant c'est que vous n'êtes jamais allé au cinéma the third one ce qui est dash c'est que le réalisateur a pris 5 ans pour le tournage ce qui est dash c'est que le réalisateur a pris 5 ans pour le tournage it means that which is dash is that the director took 5 years for the shooting of the movie ce qui est that which is dash is that the director took 5 years for the shooting here they are talking about the shooting of the movie so you can say either droll or curious droll means funny curious means odd or strange so you can use one of these the next one ce qui est dash c'est que les comédiens sont nuls ce qui est dash c'est que les comédiens sont nuls it means that which is dash is that the actors are horrible horrible or terrible nul means terrible so here it is a very negative connotation so you use the word deplorable which means deplorable or miserable ce qui est deplorable c'est que les comédiens sont nul the last sentence again we have already used either droll or curious for the third one so here you can use the other one here because here it means ce qui est dash c'est que tu ne connais aucun acteur ce qui est dash c'est que tu ne connais aucun acteur it means that which is dash is that you know no actor you don't know any actor that which is dash is that you don't know any actor so you can either say droll which is funny or curious which is strange or odd so between c and e you can write either one answer 
and the other one you can write for the remaining sentence. With that, we finish the sixth exercise. Thank you. Hello, everybody. So today we are going to do the seventh exercise in lesson four, Le Cinema. And the exercise reads, Complétez avec alors que ou même si. Complétez avec alors que ou même si. Which means, complete with, alors que means whereas, Mem C means even if. Alorca is whereas. Mem C is even if. Now both these words are conjunctions. That is, they are used to combine sentences. And when we use alorca, alorca is very similar to but. So when you use but, you will have totally contrasting ideas or the two sentences which will be combined will be completely in contrast to each other. For example, let me use but. You'll say, he is tall, but his sister is short. So, tall and short are completely in contrast to each other, which is combined by the conjunction but. So, whereas is also very similar. She likes eating breakfast, but her friend hates eating breakfast. So, here we are talking about whereas used as a conjunction to relate two ideas completely contrast to each other. Mem C, which is even if, is used to relate two sentences where there is a main clause and a subordinate clause. That is, the second sentence will be related to the first sentence or it will be in relation or it will be related to the idea of the first sentence. So let me give you an example with even if. She is even if she is tired, she does her work religiously. So she does her work religiously is related to even if she is tired. So you can see that it is dependent on the other clause, the main clause that she is doing her work although she is tired. So that is the context of even if. Even if is used to relate two ideas, one idea related to the other. But when you use whereas, it connects two sentences totally in contrast to each other. So with that understanding, I go into the exercises. The sentences are already written on the board. I will translate it and I will tell you why we use alors que or mem si according to the case. So here the first sentence is, il est brun dash son frère est blanc so it means he is brown his brother is blonde so they are talking about two ideas totally in contrast to each other so since it is totally in contrast to each other you will use alors que il est brun alors que Whereas, he is brown, whereas his brother is blonde. Let's go to the next sentence. Elle regarde des films chinois. Dash, elle ne les comprend pas. Elle regarde des films chinois. Dash, elle ne les comprend pas. She watches Chinese films. She does not understand them. She watches Chinese films. She does not understand them. That she does not understand, but she is still watching, shows that each are related to each other. So you will see, you will write mem si. Mem si, elle ne les comprend pas. So she does not understand, even if she does not understand, she watches them. So she watches them and she does not understand them is related to each other. Therefore, you use mem si. The third sentence, il fait beau à Paris, dash, il fait mauvais à Londres. So the weather is fine in Paris. The weather is bad in London. So here you can see that they are talking about two different ideas totally in contrast to each other. So you will use alors que. The weather is fine in Paris, whereas the weather is bad in London. 
so here you will use alor k but remember when you use alor k and il when you are going to write both together there is a clash in the vowel sounds as you pronounce so you cannot write k fully as it is you will put alor kill alor kill fe move alondra we go to the next sentence ela obtenu the bon notes dash el napa bian travaye pur ses exama ela obtenu the bon notes dash el napa bian travaye pur ses exama she got good marks dash she did not work enough for her exams so she got good marks dash she did not work enough for her exams so that she did not she still obtained good notes and she did not work enough for her exams are related so even if she did not work well for her exams she got good notes or she got good marks so you will write mem c mem c mem c el napa bian travaye pur ses exama ela obtenu the bon notes so she got good marks even if she did not work well for her exams we come to the last sentence of this exercise dash il ple il jura sou la pluie dash il ple il jura sou la pluie so it is raining he will play under the rain so it is raining and he will play under the rain so you can see that it is two concepts which are related to each other so even if it is raining he will still play under the rain so even if is what you will write here and then when you write mem c even if it is raining mem c plus il i cannot write si i will put apostrophe mem sil ple il jura sou la pluie even if it is raining he will play under the rain so that completes this exercise thank you hello everybody so we are going to do the last exercise the eighth one in lesson 4 le cinema and the exercise reads through way la question that is they've given certain statements you have to find the question related to the statement that is you have to write the question for the given answer so the first answer here reads say jame cameron qui a tourné le film titanic say jame say jame cameron qui a tourné le film titanic so it is james cameron who made the film titanic so it is james cameron who made the film titanic so now your question can be who made the film titanic who made the film titanic so your question can be ki a tourné le film titanic ki means who ki is who who made the film titanic is the question for this given answer we go to the next one on a film le scenario on exterior on a film le scenario on exterior the film was made or the scenes were made or shot exterior which means outside so the film was shot outside so since it says exterior outside your question has to be where was the film shot where was the film shot so u a to so this is the subject and this is the verb and this is in past tense 
So now when I'm asking a question, I'm inverting it where the auxiliary verb comes first and then I put this and because there is a clash in the vowel sounds, I'm introducing the T. Remember when you're going to invert the subject and the verb and you're asking a question and when there is a clash of two vowel sounds, you introduce T. So, où a-t-on filmé? Où a-t-on filmé? Le scénario. Le scénario. So, the answer is on exterior. It was shot outside. Où means where. The next statement is, Le film a remporté deux prix. Le film a remporté deux prix. The film won two prizes. The film won two prizes. Since it is two prizes, you ask how many prizes? How many prizes will be asked with combien de? Combien de prix? Combien de prix is how many prizes? Then you say le film a remporté. Combien de prix le film a remporté? How many prizes did the film win? So that is the meaning of this question. We come to the fourth sentence which is Mon actor favori a Brad Pitt. Mon actor favori a Brad Pitt. Which means my favorite actor is Brad Pitt. My favorite actor is Brad Pitt. So now your question is who is your favorite actor? Who is your favorite actor? So that will be written as Ki e. Remember this is my favorite actor. So you will ask your favorite actor. Ki e ton actor. Favori. Qui est ton actor favori? So that is your fourth question for the fourth statement. We now come to the last one in this exercise. And the sentence reads, J'ai vu ce film dix fois. J'ai vu the film the fois which means I watched this movie 10 times I watched this movie 10 times now your question has to be how many times did you watch the movie so remember I already told you how many or how much is combian the so how many times that is combian the foie Combien de fois? Combien de fois means how many times? Now the subject here is I saw the film. So in the question it will be you saw the film. So je and which is I and when you ask a question you, you can write combien de fois tu as vu ce film. So remember for je, this is your avoir. So since you are asking a question for je, you write tu. Avoir for tu is es. So then you write combien de fois tu as vu ce film. And then when you read the answer, you will be able to understand that it corresponds correctly. How many times did you watch this film? I watched this film 10 times. So now you know that your answer is correct. With that, we complete the eighth question in this lesson and we finish this entire lesson of exercises. Thank you. Hello, everybody. We are now going to do the ninth exercise in lesson four, where they've given certain statements and they've asked to indicate whether these statements are either positive or negative. And the case, sir, qui est positive, et sir, qui est négatif. So, indicate that which is positive and that which is negative. The first one is, c'était génial, it was awesome, 
so when you say it was awesome it obviously indicates something positive so you say positive second one set afra set afra which means it's frightening it's frightening so this indicates it's negative so you write negative third one say remarkable say remarkable it's remarkable it's remarkable so it is positive fourth one set an eshek total set an eshek total it means it's a total failure it's a total failure so it is negative the last one set extraordinaire set extraordinaire which means it's extraordinary so it's extraordinary is a positive connotation so you say positive with that we finish the ninth exercise thank you